I'm a big fan of the subcompact wide range double. I know it sounds like a mouthful, but hear me out. It gives you a much greater range than a one by, almost as much as a three by, but without all the shifting fuss in the front. It's also different from your regular compact road double because it actually functions more like a one by with a bailout. The idea is that you're in the big ring for about 95% of the time. And then when you hit that super steep dirt climb with a load, you just drop it down into the smaller ring. One way to visualize it is to kind of think of it as a high and low setting like you would have in a truck. You're not constantly shifting back and forth, but only when the terrain demands it, you've got those gears. I've made a bunch of videos on various crank sets, which would be ideal for a wide range subcompact. A big question a lot of people are asking, however, is which derailleurs should they use? As you know, with the explosion of one by multiple ring derailleurs are kind of disappearing, especially the front derailleurs, but also the rear derailleurs. In this video, I'm gonna throw up a couple of my personal bikes on the stand that are set up with a subcompact wide range double. I'll talk you through the rear derailleur configuration as well as the front derailleur configuration. I feel like there's a lot of kind of uh, institutional or industry knowledge that's being lost uh, around the front derailleur. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to salvage some of that information presented to you guys so it makes sense. So the first bike I'm putting up on the stand is my titanium Bear Claw. This is the bike that I brought with me to Girona and it still has a bit of Girona on its uh, jockey wheels here. So in, in terms of rear derailleurs that would work for a subcompact wide range, that's a little bit easier problem to solve than the front derailleur. I find any mountain bike rear derailleur from the eight, nine, 10 speed era uh, that was meant to work with doubles also works great in this configuration. This is a SRAM GX two by 10 speed rear derailleur. And this is actually one of my favorite ones if you can find it. You'll notice that it actually has a clutch so you can lock the clutch out. Right now the cassette is an 1138 and the front is a 3826 or 3824 or something like that. Uh, and this works great. So you will notice this and this is gonna happen on most of my bikes that when you're in the small ring, you're not gonna have great access to the smallest cog. For me, that's not an issue. The goal of this isn't to have uh, all the cogs available at all times. Uh, if you're gonna be in the small ring, chances are you're gonna be at least in the middle of the cassette where you're okay, or in the lowest gears, which is uh, kind of the best position. And you're rarely gonna be in the small, small uh, because you're a smart human being and you can figure this out. Let's look at the front, and this is where things get a little bit trickier. This is actually a Shimano 8-speed road double, and it works okay with this combination. There are some things that are less than ideal. If you look at the chainstay and how close the cage is, this is where, this is where things get tricky. If you have a short chainstay bike and fat tires, there's a good chance that there's gonna be some interference with the derailleur cage and the chain state or the tire. You have to be a little bit more cautious with how wide of a tire you put in with a road style uh, derailleur cage, especially. Okay, an another thing to be aware of uh, when putting on a front derailleur is the routing. This bike miraculously has a cable stop here. So the housing goes under, it terminates here, and then it's exposed cable up to the front derailleur. Many bikes don't have this, and I'll show you a clamp-on version of this stop that you can add to your bike if your bike doesn't have a cable stop here. When you're looking for a front uh, derailleur, there's a ton of different mounting options. Some derailleurs have a belt-on clamp, which just kind of wraps around your C-tube. Some, like this one, are a brazon derailleur, so it's meant to uh, bolt directly onto your bike's brazon. If your bike doesn't have a brace on, you can actually add one with this clamp on one. And this is probably the most versatile kind of solution because not only do you have vertical adjustment in the brace on, but you can move the entire clamp up and down. So best case scenario, I would try to get a setup like this. Another thing about derailleurs is the pull. Some uh, require the cable to come from the top to actuate the arm. This one's a bottom pull, the cable runs underneath comes up here and pulls the arm down uh, to shift the front derailleur. So before you get one, definitely think about how you're going to mount it on your bike. 
if the cable is going to come from the top or the bottom, get the appropriate derailleur. Some derailleurs are dual pull, and I will show you one of those in just a second. Okay, so we've got another bike on the stand here. This time it is a uh, Rivendell Sam Hilborn, again, running a wide range sub compact. On the rear here, I have a Dior mountain bike rear derailleur. I forget which, I don't know which era specifically. This, is, this clearly has a really long cage. And in terms of uh, capacity, you can probably do up to uh, 11 to 40, even an 11 to 42. Um, you know, I think this is an 11 to 36. I don't think the rear derailleurs are too difficult to source right now. Basically, any 90s era uh, mountain bike rear derailleur that was designed to shift with multiple chain rings is gonna work. Moving to the front, again, this is where things are a little bit more interesting. Uh, you can see this is a bottom pull because the cable is coming from the bottom. Once again, you can see that this is a brazon front derailleur that's attached to this movable clamp that can be moved up and down. This front derailleur is labeled as the IRD sub C uh, subcompact front derailleur. And you'll notice that it has a much smaller and shorter cage. Uh, its curve better matches these smaller chain rings, but probably more importantly, you have a lot more clearance here between the cage and the chain stay and also the tire. I mean, it helps that this is a rib and it has a really long chain stay so you can have a bigger tire without this kind of interference here. So I think best case scenario, this is uh, the type of derailleur you want to get. The downside is that these are really hard to find and I don't think uh, Microshift or IRD are making this anymore. And that's where it's gonna get more challenging in the future. Okay, so this next bike is my hardtack and it's a really strange mishmash of things right now. Uh, on the rear here, I'm using a 11 speed GRX rear derailleur made for the two by 11. And this is probably one of the best rear derailleurs that Shimano has ever made. It has massive capacity. Some people have run a 4630 in the front with an 11 to 40 tooth uh, chain ring in the rear. In this situation, I have a 4226 in the front and a 11 to 42 in the rear. So huge, huge range on this guy. Another nice thing is that it does have a clutch. So when you're going off road, your chain's not gonna be flying off. In terms of modern derailleurs, this is the one I would recommend. If you don't have a co-op, and can't go parts bin hunting. This is a solid one that you can buy. It is a little expensive. You can get similar long cage rear derailleurs uh, from brands like S-Ride that I reviewed on the channel. This probably has the nicest fit and finish, but it is gonna cost you. So even though this is an 11 speed rear derailleur, I'm combining it with a nine speed 11 to 42 tooth cassette and 11 speed chain. This all works because of the magic of friction. You're not forced to have to buy an 11 speed cassette, which becomes more expensive or 11 speed chain rings. You know, you can, you can mix and match. Looking at the front here, this is where things get interesting once again. This is that clamp on style derailleur I was telling you about where the derailleur is built into the clamp. So in order to adjust this, you have to move the entire thing up and down. This derailleur is actually a fairly inexpensive derailleur by the brand Microshift. It's kind of ugly. It's a little bit heavy, but Dang, if it doesn't work good. This derailleur is both a top and bottom pole. If I was running this from the bottom, uh, the cable would come up here, go around this guide, and then come back this way. But it's coming from the top, so it's going straight uh, into the pinch bolt right there. One thing you'll notice about this rear derailleur is how stubby the cage is. So you can see there's oodles of clearance here between uh, the derailleur cage and the chainstay, and also a lot of clearance here between the tire and the derailleur cage. I'm just gonna give you a wider view. You can see I have the C-tube mounted shifter. Again, the reason why this works is because I'm shifting this maybe four times in a ride, so it's not an inconvenience to have it there. And also I'm setting up this bike so I can use both drops and alt bars really quickly, and this is one less cable to, to rerun, essentially. I did a whole video on the shift replacement here and its historical uses, so definitely check out that one. The cranks are the new Albion uh, Clipper cranks, and they are a 4226. This is a real lovely combination. 
And although the rings are technically nine speed, it works fine with the 11 speed chain. This bike doesn't have a built-in cable stop or anything to run a front derailleur. I don't think it was designed to, to run a front derailleur, frankly. So for it to work, you'd have to get a clamp-on cable stop. Another thing you'll notice about this uh, front derailleur that you'll also encounter in other mountain bike front derailleurs is they're actually built for a larger diameter seat tube and they'll have all sorts of shims to shim down to uh, you know road tube. So this is 28.6. I think the native diameter is something like 34.9. If you go rummaging through a co-op, chances are it's not gonna have the shims included with it. It's gonna be lost somewhere. So I brought it up with our Discord group. Uh, you could either 3D print a shim, you could purchase a shim, or you could put a couple wraps of Gorilla Tape or Handlebar Tape and kind of build this diameter up so that the uh, front trailer has something to grasp onto. Totally viable hack. Another problem you might encounter, um, it's not on this bike, but some bikes have a built-in brazon. There's a fixed plate where you would mount your front derailleur to. Typically, uh, they're sized for road rings, so they, they're anticipating a 50 tooth chain ring or larger, and it's, and it's difficult to get a front derailleur low enough onto uh, the chain rings to work. You, can, you could do a couple things. You could saw off uh, that tab and just run a clamp derailleur, or there are a couple of front derailleur extension pieces that clamp onto the brazon and give you more vertical kind of adjustment. Okay, so, so I have a few more derailleurs I'm gonna show you. Uh, this is a Shimano XT mountain bike front derailleur. Um, it's got a clamp, but it's designed for thinner diameter tubing, 28.6. So this probably would have gone on a 90s mountain bike. A great option for these uh, subcompact setups because I think in their essence, they're more like mountain bike doubles anyways. So this would be another interesting option. This is a Suntour front derailleur. It came off of that 90s mountain bike that I was messing with. It's designed for a three by, but should work for a two by. This is that really stubby micro shift front derailleur that's on the hard tack. As you can see, I have the shims and I taped it there just so I don't lose them. Not very pretty, but it definitely Definitely works. And lastly, this is kind of a more modern-ish uh, mountain bike front derailleur that you might encounter. Uh, if you notice, it's got a really big clamp diameter. So, you know, I found this from a parts bin. Obviously, it didn't have the shims, so you'd have to do your own shims. And one thing you'll notice is that the clamping area is below uh, the front derailleur. This, this creates a little bit more clearance, but again, it's got that really stubby, cage so it doesn't run into the chainstay and also has more allowances for bigger tires. So hopefully this video gives you some ideas for what to look for uh, when you're assembling your own wide range subcompact double. If you like this content on kind of quirky gearing that none of the other YouTube channels are, are covering, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon. It's how we're able to buy this stuff and have the time to make these hacks and share it with you. And as always, keep the supple side down.